Hello, awesome educators. I'm back today to tell you about my absolute favorite tool, which is Flipgrid. And I know a lot of teachers who love this tool and use it all the time. I also know a lot of teachers who feel that it is daunting and kind of confusing. So I thought I would break it down really simple for you and show you because this has been absolutely revolutionary for me in remote learning and staying connected. So what is Flipgrid? First of all, it's a tool for students and teachers to communicate using short videos. So it comes in an application form, but you can also access it just using the website. So students leave videos for you and you can respond in videos and you can set it up so that they can see each other's videos as well. But that is an option that you will be able to choose later on. Right now for remote learning, I use it for check-ins and how are you today? I check to see how my students are feeling and how they're doing. It allows them to share their work and their reading with me and different projects at home. In the classroom, it has a kind of a different use. I use it more for educational purposes where we're doing exit tickets and projects and reading responses, but the options are really endless. So just to get started, we are going to create an account. If you already have an account, you can skip this part. But if you've made an account and you're kind of confused about how you set it up or you have not made one, let's start here. I'll share these slides with you um, in the comments below, but for now, I wanna show you exactly how to do it. And I do recommend that you follow along the video because all of the tips that I'm saying out loud are not going to be in the slides. So again, I will share the slides. There will not be editable, so you'll just have what you see here. So we need to go to flipgrid.com and click here. Perfect. So this took us to the Flipgrid website. Now you will see up in the top, there's educator sign up. And then there's educator sign up down here. It doesn't matter which one you choose. When I click on mine, unfortunately, my account's already set up, so it will not let me create another account. So what I would like you to do is if you're doing this in real time with me, I'd like you to pause the video, do your educator sign up. Once you log in, there will be a pop-up that comes up right away. And I don't want you to do anything once that comes up, and I will show you exactly how I use it next. So once you've created your account, it says, let's make a grid. The important thing about grids is, this is something that confused me right off the bat, is that a grid is not what your students are responding to. Your grid is almost like your classroom or a Google classroom, essentially. So you will create a grid for a group of students. So I am an elementary teacher. I might just do one for language arts. I might do one for reading responses. I might do one for science experiments at home. Or if you are an elementary teacher, you might have a different grid for each of the different subject areas that you teach or the different classes you teach. And the importance of that is that students can navigate different video prompts within each grid. So you only want students in a specific class within a grid. The best option for selecting a grid type for me has been the school email, and here is why. If you are watching this, you already know that my suggestion is using this in Google Classroom. Because of that, if you have a Google Classroom, your students already have generated Google email accounts. This makes it very easy for students to go directly from Google Classroom without even having to log in because they're already logged in through Google Classroom. So if you select school email, that's the easiest. These are other options for teachers who who do not use Google Classroom as frequently. And at the bottom, of course, you can create a customized link. I don't typically do this because I don't feel it necessary and I end up sharing this link in a way where they can't even see what it looks like. So for me, that's an unnecessary step. So what you need to do is name your grid, select a grid type, and then create a flip code. Now I will do that for you and show you what it looks like. So here I am on that grid and I am going to name this one read aloud at like I said, I'll do school email and I'm not going to create a name for this because like I said, it just seems like an extra step for me and I like to keep things simple. So I hit next. So here is where I will make my own. I love to hear my students reading at home. So I might say, read aloud at home. I, like I said, I always do school email and I'm not going to create a customized flip code because that just seems like a little bit extra work. Now we get to the school email screen. For example, at gmail.com is going to be a domain. I used to work in Fairfax County, so if this was a, a class that was in Fairfax County, I could say at fcps.edu. 
Now, it just what this does is it provides better access for the students. It recognizes these different programs that you will be coming from to access Flipgrid. So once you've done that, just do your best. Of course, there's no way to do it all, but once they are in, you will hit next, and it says your grid is ready. So now that you see this screen, what Flipgrid has done for you is it created your first flip. So a flip is what they call the video responses and the prompts that the students will have. So the grid is kind of the home base and inside the grid you will have flips. The first one that they create for you is just an introduction just to get students on Flipgrid and to get them ready. In Google Classroom for remote learning, I will just copy this code and hit copy. Sometimes we accidentally hit X before we copy our code. But what I wanna show you is that you will see this screen here. If you just hit share, it gives you that code again and you just hit copy. Again, you can pull up the QR code. Sometimes I download them and blow them up on my screen so students can see them really big and scan them from their iPads. But if you don't have that and you wanna share it on Google Classroom, just hit copy. And then I'm going to go into my tutorial classroom. See, I tested this out earlier. I'm going to share something with my class click add link and I will just paste it in there. Add link and ta-da, it is right here. So if I was sharing this for the first time, I might say something like, this is a fun new tool for sharing videos with the class and your teacher. Please click on the link and log in with Google email if needed and I'll just post it just like that. And it's done. Now when the students see it, they will click here and it will take them to this screen here. Now notice they have a different screen than us. They have the student side. On the student side, it tells them their prompt, welcome to Flipgrid, tap the green plus, and what they'll do is they go down here. So when they click on this plus button, it will open their camera. Some of them might have problems with um, settings and safety settings. So you might need to prompt them on how to go through and change and allow access to the camera. This is my remote learning look. So what they will do is you have the option to put a time limit on your videos because this one's created by Flipgrid. It's already defaulted to one minute and 30 seconds. What students have the access to do on their side, and again, this is the student screen, is they have these fun tools where they can draw, they can add stickers, and my students love to add emojis, but I do allow them to use that because it's fun for them and it gives them just a little bit of kid fun. So what they do is record, and with this record button, you can start the video, and you can start the video as long as you want within that minute and a half. And let's say you're halfway through the video, you realize that you have another thought, you can pause and then you can continue recording. So it allows the students almost to edit their own videos and some will just hit start and record the whole way through. Some will be doing little video editing and it's pretty neat to see what they can do. So once they're done, they will hit the pause button again. And this time, instead of hitting that camera button to continue recording, they will hit next. They hit next and you can start the video as long as you want within that minute and a half and let's so that's a review at the very end before they post it will ask them for a selfie it's important to have a conversation with them about appropriate selfies what we usually say is make a silly face so you can smile you can take a picture of a pet as long as it's appropriate in the classroom i sometimes allow them to take a picture with a friend so they don't feel as uncomfortable so Take a picture. Again, you are going to have kids who add stickers to it and that's okay. When you hit next, very simple. The students, it will ask them how they want their name displayed. This is important for the teacher because when I do responses, I don't want my first name coming up. So I will change mine to Miss Tansner and my students can change theirs to show their last name or not. And when I hit submit video, it's done. I can download my video or my selfie. I never do that, but See, now that I have refreshed, it is actually there. Now, again, you are still on the student screen. If you are having trouble getting stuck on the student screen, you will know you are there because this is all it shows at the top. There's not a lot. If I click on Katie Elizabeth, though, you will see I can get back to my educator dashboard. And I will click on that, which is where you will be spending most of your time. So I'm going to go into my read aloud at home. And this is where all of my different flips will be. But right now we've only created the say hello flip. When I click on this one, it will show me 
who responded, how many views I have, if there's replies, and all sorts of fun things. What I usually like to do is open them up. I will watch the videos. And you can start the video. And this little button right here, reply, will prompt you to do a video response to your students. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that my students love getting videos from me and I know your students would love getting them from you. It just bridges that gap of distance that we have right now since we can't be together. So it would go walk me through the same process. I'm not going to torture you with that. I would record a video, take a selfie, and then post it back. So we just practiced how to create a grid and how students can post on the on the grid on a specific flip and how you can reply. Now I want to show you how you can make your own flips. So we are inside of a flip right now, which means this is a specific prompt that requires a specific response. Up at the top, you can see we're on solo, say hello to Flipgrid. I'm just going to go back to read aloud at home. I want to add a new topic and say Monday read aloud. What I would do is I would type up a little prompt here. I can decide how long I want the video to be. You also have the option of video moderation, which means that once students post, and I recommend this, once students post, they're not automatically available to the rest of the class. You get to preview them and approve them. So I almost always toggle that on just to be safe. Now, a really cool feature of Flipgrid is that you can add attachments, which means this. If I want my students to read aloud with expression, I can add a YouTube video that has an author on there who reads with great expression. So I went on YouTube and I found a book that I thought would go along with my flip. Copy the YouTube link and when I go back into my Flipgrid, I just click on YouTube because that's the tool that I used. I'll paste my video in here and hit next. And when you hit add, it will add it here. This is the focus. So then you're going to add in this whole section and I will fast forward through that and show you what it looks like in a second. And now you are ready to share. And basically, like I've said before, you just click on this copy button, go into your Google Classroom, and you go into add it in a link. I would post it. Just as simple as before, all the students do is click on this link and it takes them right back into the, the grid to respond. But remember to get back to the read aloud at home, you would go here and you would continue to see the posts add up for that topic. Now, let's say you wanted to create a whole new grid. You want to do something different than read aloud at home. Up here, you click on my grids, or you can click on it up here. So my grids will take you here. We only have one. The inside of this grid, there are two topics and just one video. I can add a new grid for a new topic. Instead of creating all new grids, I'm just going to show you what's on my current flip grid. As you can see on my side, I have a few different grids. You can kind of ignore the first two. This is where I was learning how to use Flipgrid, which is what motivated me to create this tutorial because I had some trouble. And I did want to share with you some of my favorite ones that I've made. Um, my students created kid president speeches. Now here I've linked a YouTube video of this child who makes incredibly motivational speeches. The students are supposed to watch it and then create their own pep talk. Another one that I enjoyed was seeing what the word hope means to them and finding definitions for it. And then we did interviews. So there are a lot of different options. And just while we are here, I want to show you what this disco library is. The disco library will take you here where you can find creations that other educators have made and to copy them directly into your own flip. And you do have the option to change some things. So let's say that I wanted to do this one. I opened it up and I really loved this activity. It's so easy to then share it with your kids. You just do select a grid. I will say tutorial and add. What it does is if you're familiar with Google, it almost makes a copy of it. So you get to edit. It will copy over the image. It will copy over anything that was attached and then you can modify it for your class and then hit update to get the link to share with your students.
I think that just about covers it for today. Those are the basics of Flipgrid. Please leave a comment below. Let me know if it was helpful or if there are ways that I can help you understand this better because I would be more than happy to make another video. Again, I'm not an expert. This is just what I've learned from playing around and it has been extremely useful in getting in touch with my students and really feeling like we are still together in this. So I hope this was helpful. Feel free to share this with anyone who you think could benefit from it.